what makes a good presenter is um, you, first of all, you have to be knowledgeable about what you're talking about. Second, you have to be, um, um, and, well, besides knowledgeable, I mean, I lost my train of thought, but I think you have to be knowledgeable. And I, oh, I think you need to have some experiences uh, on what you're talking about, you know, that you've been there and, and like it's happened to you. And yeah. you got to turn that, those experiences into stories and tell stories. Just like I, I told you the story about Jagger out there when I was telling you about the wedding cake. Yeah. You know, I don't tell you the story about Jagger uh, and I just tell you about the wedding cake. It doesn't really make sense. But when you, you hear about Jagger and how he, you know, was in, he was top of the wedding cake and how he took over control and tried to run everything, it makes yeah. more sense. So I think you got to be knowledgeable. You got to have the experiences so you can tell stories. Um, so um, there was a there was going back to that. Uh, here's a story on the wedding cake again. Um, this kid in Pennsylvania, I forget what school it was at, but it's been a while ago, 2007 or eight. Um, I, I went to the school for two days. The first day they just wanted me to observe. They didn't want me to do anything. Just watch the kids at recess. And then the second day I was doing doctor recess, and then I was doing an after school training with the teachers. So I went and observed. And the first day there was this kid. Um, he came outside and their biggest problem, they have this big kickball game and, and there's always like 30, 40 kids trying to get in the kickball game and they have arguments every day. So um, this kid, he comes out, he basically, he's top of the wedding cake. He picks the teams, um, tells everybody what to do. And of course his team's kicking first. And of course he's the first kicker and he kicks the ball. He kicks the ball and he pops it up and the like center fielder catches it. So he's out. So there's like 15 kids in line. So he he's out. He goes to the end of the line. And now the second kicker goes and he gets on base and the third kicker goes and gets on base and it goes, gets down to about the sixth kicker. Now they got like two kids on base. They've scored a couple runs and there's one out or whatever. And all of a sudden this kid's back at the front of the line. He's, he weaseled his way up from like 15th in the end of the line. And, you know, before or after like only five or six people have kicked, he's back at the front. And I'm like, why'd you guys let him up? And they're like, well, he's really good. If we let him kick, we're going to win. So he basically top of the wedding cake has manipulated his way and told these kids, Hey, I'm better than you. So let me kick. And they let him do it. So you, you see stuff like that top of the wedding. It, it drives you nuts, but that's what kids do. Right. Yeah. You know, Kurt too, like one of the, I think one of the greatest things too about your program. And when I first started teaching, I pretty much modeled my teaching practice after watching you. I was very fortunate early on and I went to see you three or four times in the beginning of my teaching career. And I really started taking what you do as far as the inclusion style and small sided games. It mm -hmm. makes a huge difference. Yeah. You know, oh yeah. Absolutely. The kickball game of having 15 kids in line, just making small sided games will eliminate a lot of those problems. Doing the absolutely. inclusion style teaching eliminates a lot of those problems, you know, so kudos to you on, you know, introducing me to that early on because it changed my world. 